Welcome back, villagers, to another episode of Hugh Tran, the insurance man. Just as I predicted, a lot of business owners, a lot of top dog, not like you and I, I'm talking about billionaires, millionaires, they're leaving New York City because of what happened a couple days ago. If you watched my previous video, I mentioned that um, Attorney General Letitia James, along with Judge Engron, they threw the hammer at Donald Trump, $355 million that he had to cough up, including legal fees and all that stuff. And it bothers me because if you look at facts, he didn't do anything wrong. If you look at feelings, you can find some bullshit reasons, try to defame this man, try to make him pay a large sum of money, clout chasing, and the next day go on national news and brag about it. And that's what Letitia James did. She went on to ABC, I believe, and she said, oh, I got him. We got him. He's not above the law. Uh, and she threatened. She made a threat. And that threat is, if Donald Trump don't pay for this fine legal fees, we're going to take away his business. Oh, boy. So for, for an average person, you may, you may think, oh, that's nothing. But from a business standpoint, business owner, we're talking about millionaire, billionaires. They don't want nothing to do with this type of bullshit. Let me explain. Um, Elena and John Cardone, they went out publicly on Twitter. And this is what they said. I'll put it into the left and right so that you guys will know what they said. But I'll, I'll make a summary of it. They don't want nothing to do with New York anymore. So that's why they're taking their businesses to Florida. Less drama, less headache, and less political agenda. Because when you are a business owner, you hire thousands of people. These employees rely on you to do what's right. They don't, the last thing they want is have to deal with court cases because of some woke agenda trying to destroy your business and threaten you to take away your business. That's a lot of stress, unnecessary BS. So that's why these couple, they're moving to Florida to create more opportunity for the state of Florida. Crazy, right? All because of corrupted politicians and judge. And I'm gonna show you guys a video too uh, by Mr. Uh, Mr. Wonderful, uh, AKA, you know who he is already, Kevin O'Leary. And keep in mind, Kevin O'Leary is not a fan of Donald Trump. But this is what he said on CNN. Wouldn't there be many companies who would not want to do business or loan money to people like yourself or investors if they know that they can get away with fraud and there's no recourse to protect them? Excuse me, what fraud? I don't, I, this is not about Trump anymore. When you I know. get a developer, when you get a developer that builds a building, and he says it's worth $400 million and he wants to borrow $200 million from a bank, which happens every day, everywhere on earth, including every American city. Every developer is an entrepreneur. They shine the light on their building and they say it's worth four hundred. dollars The bank does its own due diligence, as was done in this case, because they're very good at it. The banks are very good. And they say, no, it's worth three hundred. dollars We're only going to loan you $150 million. That haggling has gone on for decades. That's how it works. And then... In this case, even, the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. We'd like to. But the judge said, no, 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 no. Let's penalize this developer for $355 million. And if we're going to do that, let's penalize all the developers all across America. They've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. All well, around the world, people are talking about what happened here. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? How about we go well, somewhere I, I else? Think, how, I think there are to, people who would, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I want to, converse well, with you, you and you said, just did. I, it's, it's only because I want you're, to have a conversation, a, you know Kevin, as opposed you be, to just you, having you tell you me. I respect you because you're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You understand well, exactly what I'm talking about. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm respectable for a number of reasons, Kevin O'Leary, but being a, a lawyer is one of those issues. But I'll tell you, when I, when I hear your conversation, and I do want to converse with you about this point, 
I understand that there are legitimate concerns that were raised during the trial and will continue to be raised about who the quote unquote, what, who is actually bringing the suit? It wasn't the banks who were saying that we as consumers or unsophisticated feel this way. But Letitia James, the attorney general, and I know you want to expand beyond Trump, has suggested, well, it's about making the playing field level for those who are not the major and billionaire investors, but for those who are supposed to put business records out there, want to get a loan, the idea of making sure that they have to have the same true statements included as those who have a lot more money. Is there any weight to that for you? Well, I ask you. Who lost money? And I make it even clearer. You and I, we're developing a data center together. And I say to you, we can go to New York where this just happened. It's your money now. You're now an investor and you're taking risk. You're an entrepreneur with me, right beside me. We're together on the deal. Or I can show you Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, where the governors actually ran businesses. Let's go there where this never happened before. They have power, they have permits. They've got legislation that's supportive of entrepreneurship. Why would we go to New York? Why take the risk? My only point is, did we just diminish the great state of New York and the great people of New York? And shouldn't they ask for better management so they don't become a flyover state? Remember, New York has the highest taxes in the country, the worst regulatory environment, and it's incredibly mismanaged. And I'm pointing out now on top of that, you get this insanity. A, a victimless crime, and forget about Trump, it's not about Trump. I don't mm -hmm. care about Trump in this. I care about America, and I care about entrepreneurship, and I care about democracy, and the fairness. The judicial system is now being criticized. People are asking themselves, the bar of New York, is this judge rational to charge $355 million in a case where no one lost any money? Is that good for the people of New York? Should the people of New York wake up to this and say, what's happening to us? Why is this becoming so perverse? Why are we the focus of this injustice? And I have nothing to do with Trump. I'm not supporting Trump. I'm supporting American entrepreneurship. And New York is slowly becoming the number one loser state in America. I'm sorry, that's what's happening. Wow. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Are you with Donald Trump or are you against Donald Trump? What do you think about the case? Because I want to know. We're here to create a community where we have a voice. Freedom of speech is very important. Where I came from, we can't say any of these stuff because if you want to, they put you behind bars and you can talk to yourself for who knows how long. It's not fun. So I appreciate this country, freedom of speech a lot. And, and that's something that a lot of Americans, we don't appreciate because, you know, we take shit for granted. So be very careful, you guys. But back to this case, I predicted in the last video, if you guys haven't seen it yet, check it out, that it's not going to end well for New Yorkers. Because at the end of the day, bad policies, bad agenda, the people always pay for it at the end of it. Because New York uh, truckers... They are thinking about boycotting routes, meaning supplies will drop. No New York truckers going to uh, give you guys essential stuff, stuff you need. You know, uh, eggs, uh, milk, food, water, whatever it is, it's going on a decline. When it's going on a decline, the price is going to go up on top of inflation. So that's not going to end well for the people. I really hope the New Yorkers, uh, truckers, reconsider. But I can't blame them for what they want to do. Because you can't bully Donald Trump like that. Even if you hate him, you have to look at facts. The facts are there was no victim. And he borrowed a loan from a bank and he paid it back with interest. We need to close this chapter and move on. Instead of attacking a political opponent, try to go for clout chasing. And at the end of the day, the people always pay for the ultimate price. I appreciate you for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you uh, feel like you learned a thing or two, please consider subscribing. Because as you can see, your boy is trying to build up his channel because I'm tired of sheep trying to make everything far, far left. It's time we meet in the middle and have a proper conversation. I love you guys. Until next time.